All right, so the good news is there's nothing new in this video. You've already done it with the previous videos. Let's talk about how to graph things and how to find an equation given a graph. All right, so to find an equation given a graph, there's two methods. All right. Method number one, we'll call the red method, is going to be find the vertex and a point x, y, like in example four. All right, example four was in uh, 5.1.2. Option two, the blue method, is going to be using function transformations. which we've also done in 3.7. So we've already done both of them. Let's uh, solve some problems. Example seven. Find an equation for these functions. And again, it might be a good idea if you want to pause the video and copy this graph down For your notes. But otherwise, let's do both methods on this one. All right, let's try the red method and the blue method. So first off, what's our hk? What is the vertex of this graph? Well, the vertex is right here. It's the point 2 comma 1, right? We're right 2 from the origin and up 1. Well, we're almost done. We're almost done. All we need is our a value, right? y is going to be a times x minus h squared plus k. So to find the a value, we just need any x, y point. Choose any x, y point on this graph. You have infinitely many choices. Um, the y-intercept is a decent choice. But any choice that you see. You can also use this point right here. This is the point uh, 3 comma negative 1. Any point. I'll choose y-intercept. Why not? 0, negative 7. So 0, we plug in. It's our x. Negative 7, we plug in as our y. That's going to give us negative 7 is equal to a times 0 minus 2 squared plus 1. And we'll simplify. Solve for a. Negative 7 is a times negative 2 squared plus one. Let's subtract one from both sides. Negative eight is four a. Divide both sides by four. A is negative two. So y is just negative two times x minus two squared plus one. But you can also use function transformations and let's show that and how that compares. Okay. It's a little harder sometimes, but it can also be quicker. So function transformations also say, find the vertex. So again, just like before, we'd say, okay, the vertex is at two comma one. So we're moving the graph right two, subtract two on the inside, moves it right two, and up one is adding one. to the outside. What's the vertical stretch? Well, normally parabolas open upwards. Our parabola is opening downwards, so we know there has to be a negative here. Let's look at the vertical stretch. So a, a regular parabola that goes downward would move right one and down one. Normally it'd go right one and down one, but our parabola is going down two. It's going down twice as fast as it normally should. There's a vertical stretch of two. And that's the other way of getting to the same answer. All right. Normally, you move right one, you move up or down positive one. But we're going down twice as fast. So A equals two.
Let's do another problem real quick. All right. This next problem, I have to move things over. I don't want don't want y'all to to see the answer. Here's the next one. So again, there's two methods. This is this is part B. Two methods. I'm not going to do it in red this time. That was too much red for me. You could just say, all right, what's HK? What's that vertex? That vertex is negative 5, positive 5. And then we choose any point. The, y, the y intercept works. Any point. And then, that, and then we're good to go. I don't want to deal with fractions, though, so let's not deal with that. This point works, point uh, negative two comma positive two. The negative two positive two is what we do. And then y is gonna be a times x minus h. So that's minus a minus five is plus a positive five. Like so, y is positive two, x is negative two. And you could solve for x this way. October, no. No scratching the bed. Don't be a bad kitty. All right, so, and now what, what we're gonna do from here is we're just gonna solve for a, okay? So we grab our pen, very careful, with our cat who's on our shoulders, and we're gonna simplify. We're gonna get two is equal to a times three squared plus five, subtract five from both sides. <laughs> All right, that gives us negative three is equal to nine a, divide both sides by nine, and you're gonna get a equals negative a third. There we go, we have our answer. Y equals negative one third, x plus five squared plus five. Oh, okay. This isn't the answer I have in the book, but it should be the right one. It is the right one. I just wrote down the wrong problem on Desmos. Okay, we're good to go. Or you could use function transformations here. Function transformations are actually a lot harder on this one because, again, normally the logic is we go right one normally and down one. It's kind of hard to see exactly how far we go down because it's fractional. So function transformations are harder for fractional stuff. Um, but you could still use both. All right, let's uh, do one more example to finish this video. Let's go the opposite direction with example eight. Sketch a graph. And find the vertex. The axis of symmetry. And the intercepts. All right, so you can always use Desmos to, to help you out, but I think you're actually at a point where you can do this by hand. Part A is going to be y equals x squared minus 2x. Let's bring out our graph paper. So, we're going to get ready to sketch our graph. We can just find all these things by hand if we wanted to. It's a really good practice to do it all by hand. But again, you have access to computers. You can plot this on Desimos, but I do want you to copy it down to your own paper. Okay. So for this one, what we have, let's start with the vertex and the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals negative b over 2a. That's negative negative 2 for b over two times a, a is one. All right, the axis of symmetry is just the line x equals one. So let's write that down. This is the, this is the uh, axis of symmetry right there. So the vertex is just, all right, what's the y coordinate when x equals one? It's gonna be one squared minus two times one. That's one minus two. The y-coordinate is going to be negative 1. So the vertex is the point 1, 
comma negative one. The vertex should always be on the axis of symmetry. And now you have a couple options after this for graphing more. And again, we we were asked to box these things. Because I know a is equal to positive one, I know how parabolas behave. Normally parabolas behave if you go right one from the vertex, you go up one, and it's symmetric. If you go right two, that's up four. How do I know that? Because it always is squared. Moving up one is one squared. Right two, what's two squared? That's up four. Right three, three squared should be up nine to get to positive eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can use what we know about how parabolas function to actually graph the rest if we wanted to. Up one, right one, up one squared. Right two, up two squared. Right three, up three squared, and so on. So we can actually graph it without doing anything else. And it should look like this. And this also tells us exactly, we don't have to use a quadratic formula here, October, don't you dare. We don't have to use a quadratic formula here because we've actually already graphed our intercepts. Okay? Do we have, no, look at this, look at this. <sighs> All right, she doesn't want you guys to have math videos. October wants playtime. So our zeros, our x-intercepts, that's where we cross the x-axis. That's at zero, zero, and two, zero. And the y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. That's also gonna be zero, zero. We got kind of lucky on this one. Let's do an, a messier problem. Part B, f of x equals negative two x squared plus five x minus eight. All right. Um, I actually don't know how this is gonna look just yet. Let's find the vertex before I sh d decide my y-axis. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. That's negative 5 over 2 times negative 2. That's a positive 5 fourths. That's our axis of symmetry. And the vertex, well, we need the y-coordinate. When x is 5 fourths, what's the y-coordinate? All right, I'm, I could do this by hand, but it's just going to take way too long. What's the y-coordinate here? The y-coordinate is going to be negative 2 times 5 fourths squared. Plus 5 times 5 fourths. Minus 8. Negative 4.875. So our vertex is at 1.25, that's 5 fourths, negative 4.875. So this is what, what I said earlier. Our graph is opening downwards. A value is negative. And our vertex is also negative. So when I'm making my graph, let's have mostly negative y values. So the vertex is at 5 fourths. That's 1.25, kind of right here. And uh, it's at 1.25 and one, two, three, negative five is right here. And it's a little bit above negative five. And then we can also use function transformations to get the other points. Normally, we'd move right one and up one. But it's going down, and it's going down double than what we'd think. So normally it'd go down one, but we can actually make it go down two. And then it's symmetric. 
All right. Do the same thing. Normally we'd go right to two squared is four. We're actually going to go down eight now because we're doubling. Going down eight, one, two, three, four. It's not going to fit. All right. So it's just really steep. Like so. All right. This is what our problem looks like. What are the x-intercepts? There aren't any. We could use a quadratic formula, but visually we know there aren't any. But you, you may have to use quadratic formula if it's not obvious. The y-intercept is definitely not obvious. The y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So let's just plug that in. f of zero is equal to zero plus zero minus eight. All right. The y-intercept is zero comma negative eight. Actually, wait, why does my, yeah, so my graph should be steeper, right? It should go through this point right here. My graph is not quite steep enough, but that's close enough. That answers the problem, and that's kind of what I'm going to expect from you. Let me know if you have questions about expectations or uh, just how to do the problems. Good luck.